Distractions, distractions, distractions. That seems sometimes they almost come all at once. You go through that? Well, today, this broadcast, we're going to go with part two, and we're going to discuss three ways you might be able to defeat them. Stay tuned. And welcome to this week's edition of Living Hope Today. So glad to have you along with us on this week's broadcast. And uh, we're excited that you're here. We are going to continue in part two of Weapons of Mass Distractions. And uh, today's series is going to do something. Last week we heard a lot about what was going on in the series. But what we're going to talk about this time, we're going to talk about three ways that uh, you can do to fight distractions hindering your spiritual growth. And uh, last week we learned that, that uh, distractions is a weapon that Satan likes to use. And I'll tell you, it is a, uh, a very effective and potent type of uh, tool that he uses to distract us. And uh, so I think this message, this whole series has been just been a really a blessing even to me to, to, uh, to listen to it because it has so much in it that uh, uh, I can apply to my life as well. And, you know, sometimes we present these, uh, these uh, devotions and usually how I come up with these devotions, I think of something... Uh, that, re that would be very much relatable to me. I'm thinking of you as well, but I know you're probably just like me. You think about these different things that happen. And uh, just like uh, two weeks ago, when we, uh, three weeks ago, when we discussed the Bible prophecy in that series and how that is intriguing for our time. And here we are today, we're talking, taking the second uh, part on weapons of mass distraction. And we want to talk about how this distraction can be limited, diminished, if we'll take it upon ourselves to do something about it. And we're going to find three ways today that you would be able to uh, uh, help you fight against some of those things that are going on in our life that are major distractions to us in living a life for Christ, a spiritual, great spiritual life for Christ. So stay tuned. We're going to get into that in just a, just a little bit. I want to thank our many viewers that are watching. We heard some, uh, from uh, some folk this past week from last week's broadcast, and they said, this hit me right in the face with uh, the message that you brought. And uh, I forget, they, I, I should have brought that letter, but they said something about the fact that they were, uh, that this distraction was something that was very, very strong in their life. And I admit, it's with me too, you know, all sorts of things. We have so many things that can pull us away from staying focused on what God has for us. And that's important for us. We need to really be thinking about those things and how uh, we can be much better for Christ in our personal walk if we put aside those distractions, those things here of the world that come to us. So I appreciate all you folks that have written, uh, have sent text messages, uh, have sent emails. And we, we, we only received one letter this past week, but it, it's good to hear from you and to know that you're out there and that you enjoy these programs. And I, I want to encourage you to uh, just take a moment and uh, hit the share on this program. Now, at the very bottom here, you're going to see the share button that you can hit. And I suggest that you tap that button and share it to your friends. Uh, in fact, 
go back to last week's broadcast. You can still see it on, on our site here and on our page. T take that and hit that one, share. Don't let the, these two broadcasts be separated. Uh, hit both of them. Let both your family see it or share with them uh, uh, about this. Uh, give them a call or, or message them and let them know about this series and about AIC TV. We've got some great things that are coming up since we've restarted our broadcasting. These are all brand new. These are not uh, encore programs. Uh, this is brand new programming. So I encourage you to uh, let people know that we are on the air and this is a program by Native people for Native people. And we want to make sure that you're experiencing uh, the joys of Christ as we watch, as we learn together, we hear God's word opened up to us each and every week right here on this broadcast because that's what we want to do is share Christ to as many people as possible and especially our Native American people. So take a moment to hit the share button. You can look at, here's the ways that you can connect with us if you want to contact us. Uh, of course, there's our website. You can see our Facebook page. You can see our Twitter site there. You can also uh, see our mailing address. These are all ways that you can contact us or by email. And uh, just let us know that you are watching our program and uh, that it is a blessing to you. And I know this uh, series uh, will be a blessing to many folks. So I encourage you to just uh, uh, take those, that information, write us, let us know how much of a blessing this has been to you. And uh, we want to hear from you. That's important. So I hope that you'll do that. Uh, just uh, you saw the, the Connect page there, and I, pr I pray that you'll just uh, take time to write us. Let us know that you're watching our broadcast. You know, this production of this program, Living Hope Today, is a ministry that we started many, many years ago to reach out to our Native American people. And uh, we, were in, we were doing television for a while, and uh, some of our people have seen that, Native America Magazine. We had our television program that started out and uh, was broadcast uh, in, uh, mostly in the western parts of the country. Uh, we started out doing video. That's what we originally started out doing, just doing video and making videos available on VHS tape. You remember those? <laughs> but that's how we started out. And, uh, but the Lord has opened the doors to the internet ministry back in the fall of 2009. We started our first broadcast in January of 2010. So it's been 11 years since we've, uh, that we've been on the air on the internet. And at that time, I don't think there was anybody that had programs that were produced specifically a native program that was using the internet to broadcast programs. And this was even, this was even before uh, we started with Facebook. We weren't on Facebook. We had our own website and our website broadcast right from there. And we had a great following. The Lord wonderfully blessed that. We are getting ready pretty soon. I, I better not say pretty soon, but we are getting ready to go back and get back on our webpage because there are some topics that we will be covering that uh, Facebook may not like. Uh, we could be canceled off Facebook and even off of our, uh, we don't do too much to our um, YouTube page, but uh, those are places where uh, we may be moving back to our uh, web page. So you'll need to take note of that web page at AICTV.org. And uh, if you'll go back to that, that will be a way that you'll be assured. But we'll let you know plenty, plenty in advance. Well, let's get started with some great music before our, we start our message today. And this song fits exactly with this series on um, distraction, weapons of mass distraction. And uh, this is by our family, the Antoninian family. And I want you to listen to the song, listen to the words as they sing this beautiful song, My Incorruptible Crown, the Antoninian family. Stay tuned, we'll be right back. Chosen has to 
train Exerting effort Against the wind and rain To suffer loss Sometimes even through his pain For the moment of victory He is to gain Determination Can be seen in his eyes His only focus is centered on the prize Every distraction he has set aside And to win is the only thing that's on his mind So let me run on this race that is set before me Pressing on toward the mark of the higher calling now Till face to face See my King in glory and receive my incorruptible crown. When trials come, somehow I shall be strong, and with your strength, Lord. I'll just keep holding on And though sometimes it seems all hope is gone Lord, your strength alone I shall lean upon So let me run this race That is set before me Resting on They were stoned, afflicted, even slain. They obtained a good report by faith without this promise. Oh, that we have to help us overcome today. Today. So let me run this race. We wanted to get right into this message today because we have a lot we want to talk about on the episode of, of Weapons of Mass Distraction. This is part two this week. And uh, last week we learned a lot of great things about this. We uh, just looked at what the definition of distraction is. We learned what that is. What are our greatest distractions uh, used against us? Spiritually, we talked about examples in Scripture of those who the devil used distraction against them to get their eyes off the Lord. And then we talked about how demonic forces use distraction and deception as a tactic of mass distraction to make us fall. So we've learned a lot just at last week's broadcast. And if you haven't seen it, if you haven't, uh, if you missed last week's broadcast, 
Look at our video page here. Go back and you can watch it. It's available to view 24 hours a day as all of our broadcasts are. But this week, we want to talk about something on three ways to fight distractions from hindering our spiritual growth. We're going to look at three ways to do that. And let's get started right away. First one is diminish distractions. To dismin diminish distractions, we must learn to distance ourselves from temptations uh, of distractions that would distract us from what matters most, and that's our spiritual life. In 2 Corinthians 10, 4, 5, let's read this. It says, For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds, casting down arg uh, arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. I like that last verse. Bringing every, th every thought, every thought, every distraction into captivity. In other words, putting it away so that we can be obedient to Christ. You know, in 1 Corinthians 7.35, Paul is talking about, the con in the context of relationships and marriage. That's what that is really talking about. But I'm going to look at that verse just a little different thought and context, uh, context because I'm... I want you to read this. this. He writes that he wants us to help you serve the Lord best. Best ways to serve the Lord. Not getting distracted. Not looking at other things. With little distractions as possible. Let's look at that. 1 Corinthians uh, uh, 7, verse 35 says, And this I say for your own profit, not that I may put a leash on you, but for what is proper and that you may serve the Lord without distraction. Well, today, when you say that uh, you consider, what, what, what you really consider, perhaps, is your greatest distractions. Uh, I'm going to say, I'm going to pull it up right here. I've got it right here. Is it this? Is it this thing? Uh, the mobile phone. Is it probably one of your greatest distractions? You know what? It is for a lot of people. Uh, this device has only been around uh, for about 25 years. That's not very long. Uh, it's become one of or more used uh, as one of our most prized possessions, I think, is the telephone. We don't want to go anywhere without it. You can't go anywhere without it. We can't... Uh, uh, we, we can't find our phones. When we, we lose them, anxiety sets in. <laughs> we can't worry. So, I need my phone. Uh, it's the prized position. You can't go anywhere. Um, but uh, y your life really is more important than this phone. It is. It's more important. We don't need this to be have such a stronghold on our life that we have to have this. It becomes the number one priority. And sometimes it can and does. And uh, our phone's attention uh, has a lot of things on it. It draws us to uh, social media. It draws us to the Internet. It, it can, uh, we, our distractions can lead to money and success, and we talked about some of those things last week. There's lots of things that uh, distractions can bring, and the phone is one of them. And uh, I, I look at that as being a, a huge distraction. In fact, if we allow it, if we allow the phone or the internet or drinking or gambling or trying to uh, get six, be successful, uh, allow politics to enter our life in nothing else. It crowds out Christ in our life. 
you could actually have those items become idols, idols in your life. And you're gonna say, no, Tori, I would never, I would never allow that. But it can. It can become an idol in your life. We need to put those down. We need, you know, God created us and he gave us a passion. He gave us spiritual gifts that we can use. He has called us to worship him and serve him. And he's given all these things. This is how we can really diminish distractions at every cost. Don't waste our, your life or your time on such things as a phone or on these other, other things that pop up that distract us. God has much for us uh, and, uh, and distractions get in our way. So I want you to always remember, diminish those things that distract us. Put your phone away. Put it down for a change. Read the Bible. Pray. Those are things you can do. The second way to fight distractions is to focus on the important. You know, ask God to give you power to focus on what's really important. Perhaps the world's wisest man, Solomon, uh, provides us with some very good God-inspired advice. <laughs> Let's look at it. In Proverbs chapter 4, verses 14 through 16, we read this. 14, don't follow the bad example of cruel and evil people. 15 says, turn aside and keep going. Stay away from them. 16 says, they can't sleep or rest until they do wrong or harm some innocent victim. That's a different translation, but it really gets the point across of things that Solomon, through the Holy Spirit, was telling us that we need to do. Stay away from evil people. You say, well, is that a distraction? It can be. There are people in your life that can pull you away from what God has for you. That we need to remember. We read, and continuing on, we read in Proverbs uh, 4, again, in verses, skip on down to verses 25 through 27, it says, keep looking straight ahead without turning aside. Verse 25, know where you are headed and you will stay on solid ground. And then verse 27 says, don't make a mistake by turning to the right or to the left. See, he wants us to stay focused. He wants us to keep our eyes on him. Don't allow ourselves to change. He says not to lose focus to what really matters, just as Peter did when we read last week how he focused on Jesus as he walked down the water towards Jesus, who was walking towards him also. But Peter jumped out of that boat, headed to Jesus, and immediately he took his eyes off Jesus and he began to sink. He lost focus. He was distracted. That's what can happen. We must focus on Christ. We need to begin our day with prayer and reading God's word. Be attentive to what God wants you to do and what is really important. All right, third, let's listen to the voice of God. Uh, don't allow yourself to listen to all the noise of the world. There's too much of that out there. It will keep you really from hearing the voice of God. Turn off the TV. Turn off the radio for a little bit. Set your phone down. Listen to what God has to say. He longs for us to have fellowship with him through prayer, through reading the Bible, through worship. Those are the things that really matter. Those, we must be sensitive to God's voice. You know, he provides a path. He provides a direction for us. 
He is a constant guidance for us in all things. Wherever, whatever we do, he directs our lives uh, to have a fullness in him in everything that we do if we keep our eyes on him. We must be willing to literally block out the distractions and allow ourselves to hear God, to hear what he wants us to do. You know, in Isaiah 31, we read that uh, God is there to help mask out the bad path in life we might follow. He is there to guide us. I'd like to think that God is whispering a very small voice in my ear that I can hear him. It is so clear. You know how you go into a room and sometimes people begin to whisper like this. Everybody stops and looks and listens because they want to hear what you have to say. That's the way God is. He whispers in our ear. In Isaiah 30, 31, uh, 30 verse 21, it says, Your ear shall hear a word behind you saying, This is the way. Walk in it. Whenever you turn to the right hand and whenever you turn to the left. See, listen to that voice. Listen to it. Let God hear, be able to speak to you in a way so you can hear him. Listen to him. Don't let those distractions get in your way. Listen to God. So we have just heard what have we learned in this week. And what we've learned is, is to diminish distractions. We can't get rid of all of them. They're always going to be there, as we mentioned last week. They're always going to be there, but we can diminish, diminish distractions and focus on what's really important in our lives and be sensitive to the voice of God. May I encourage you to always serve Him and proclaim His goodness. I love this passage of Scripture. I want to share it with you because I know it's going to be a blessing. It's been a special uh, blessing to me and encouragement to my heart. It's in Hebrews 12, verses 1 and, two, uh, 1 and 2. It says, Therefore, we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin, and I say that's distractions, which so easily ensnares us. And let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking on to Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Friends, I hope you'll learn to look to God, look to Him for everything, and cast aside those things that try to distract us, that try to take our minds away from living a fullness in Christ. Will you do that today? I trust you will. Let me pray with you. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time that we've had together. We thank you for this message that you have given to us about learning to focus and keep our eyes on you. Lord, I pray in Jesus' name that you'll help each and every one of us to not let the daily distractions that come our way keep our eyes off you. Instead, Lord, may we learn to look to you for everything and learn to follow the path that you have for us. Thank you, Lord, for what you're going to do. Jesus' name, amen. I trust you and say that prayer as well, that you'll live the life God wants you to by doing away with distractions in your life. Now, I trust that you'll plan to join us next week at this very same time for Living Hope Today, right here on AIC-TV. Until then, next week, may the Lord bless and keep you.